So um, this talk is based on a recent paper of, of mine about CoreSat. Uh, and this is a joint work with uh, um, Vladimir Braverman, Robert Kurtgamer, and Xuan Wu. <coughs> OK, so um, let me see what happens. Um, OK, great. It works now. Yeah, so. Um, OK, so in this talk, we are going to talk about the clustering problem, uh, particularly the key clustering. And this clustering problem is a basic data analysis task. Uh, and we are dealing with missing values, which is a common phenomenon in the data set. So traditionally, uh, our popular method for uh, dealing with missing data is data imputation. So what is data imputation? Data imputation is that you just fill in the missing values uh, using some method before computation. And uh, uh, usually this requires prior knowledge or statistical assumptions uh, that may not be available or hard to verify. So um, in this work, we um, use or consider a worst case approach where no assumption or knowledge is required. And furthermore, we, uh, the focus is to tackle the computational challenge of this uh, uh, variation of clustering problem and uh, particularly for big data. Um, all right, so uh, what's our definition of this? Okay, so how do we model this missing value? So suppose that the input is a, a data set in RD, uh, except that we may have missing values, which I denote as this question mark. So this notation RD question mark is basically this uh, range or domain of the missing value, uh, vectors with missing values. And uh, the way we capture this missing value is uh, to use this distance function where uh, for two points that comes from this uh, missing value vector space, uh, we only evaluate the distance on these uh, uh, corners where both of them are now missing. Um, so I want to say more about this, is that uh, every point here could actually be viewed as a, a fine subspace, where uh, the, affine, the subspace is actually defined by these uh, missing values. Okay, so the freedom of the missing values. And uh, the distance is actually the distance to that uh, uh, affine subspace. So uh, the key means clustering here uh, is defined as usual, just that we use the new distance, where the objective, uh, this x is a data set, and this c is a key point center. Uh, note that this center is a classical, cent traditional center, where no missing value is allowed. So we still want to find uh, a perfect uh, centers for, for clustering. And the objective is simply the sum of distance from the data set to the nearest centers uh, squared. Um, so this problem, so what's, what makes this problem interesting is that uh, uh, the, under this new distance, there's no triangle inequality, which was commonly assumed for metric spaces. So this is, a, this is an example. So consider these three points with question marks. Uh, and you can compute that the distance is, looks like this. Uh, uh, so let's try to compute AB. Uh, and th this is easy to, to see because the only one coordinate that both are now missing is the third one. So the distance is four, right? So you can compute this like this. So um, the tri triangle inequality clearly breaks. Uh, and this actually introduces a lot of computational challenges because many of the classical clustering algorithms assume this triangle inequality. For instance, key means plus plus, which was widely used uh, clustering method, cannot work here, or even well defined. So, and uh, the studying of this clustering with the missing values actually uh, tracks a lot of uh, uh, like algorithm research. For instance, there's a related problem called key center uh, was studied under this um, like missing value setting, and there are um, several a series of works on it. And then um, only recently we know a p-test for this key means with missing values, uh, and uh, the running time is unfortunately quadratic, which is not practical. Not to mention to deal with big data. By the way, the, this was a recent SODA paper. Approach for dealing with this, uh, especially in big, in big data, is to consider um, the so-called core set, uh, which is a data reduction technique uh, for clustering. So what do I mean by core set? So it's very simple. So this X is a data set. So a core set is simply a subset S where uh, you want that for every possible class in center C with the key points. Uh, the cost uh, evaluated on this uh, core set, which is subset, 
is within one plus minus epsilon times the original data set. So um, the, the important thing is that this um, cost preservation holds for all, all possible centers in RD, which is infinite. And uh, be, because of this uh, guarantee, if you only care about the uh, clustering cost itself or clustering, the task of clustering, then you can safely replace this uh, original data set with this uh, uh, hopefully much smaller data set. So we, in some sense, turning this big data into tiny set. And OK, so, uh, but what makes this even more interesting is that uh, it actually implies efficient algorithms for big data, particularly sublinear algorithms. Um, so in some sense, this uh, challenge of big data is about the computational model, right? So if you just consider the offline algorithm in Turing machine, even scanning through the data once or is already too costly. So the, the way people uh, or the way theoretical people like w deals with this uh, big data is to consider sublinear models. For instance, at least here, streaming model where uh, you assume the data comes in a stream sequential order and you uh, care about the uh, space complexity and the distributed computing or parallel algorithms and fully dynamic algorithm where uh, the, 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 the data is not coming in a batch but uh, online with update and you want to answer the query efficiently. So, and uh, luckily CoreSet can be used easily uh, to imply these types of algorithm provided that you have an offline construction. Um, this is a very simple, um, okay, so it's very simple because, uh, so first of all, we would use this uh, very important uh, property of CoreSet, usually holds uh, just from the definition, is that CoreSet is composable. So suppose you have two data sets, X and Y, and you compute the CoreSet for X and compute the CoreSet for Y. And you can prove that the, the union of this would be a CoreSet for X union Y. So because of this very simple property, one can use a similar, like a dear, an idea similar to, mer to merge sort, called merge and reduce, to compute this core set in a very uh, like efficient way. So let me first uh, present this as an uh, offline algorithm. So suppose now, okay, so, so here I draw a binary tree, and the leaf nodes are the data buckets. So you can like bucket the data in an arbitrary way, and uh, so the, in the second uh, uh, last all level, this would be the core set of the two uh, children uh, bucket. And uh, we do this recursively. So every time this node would take uh, the merge of these two um, child node and take the core set. And, and then eventually you will find the final core set um, as the top level, as a root. So why this is so useful? Because, so as you can see, for every level, this is highly parallelizable, right? So this could be computed if, uh, like independently, and for every node, you could simply use an offline core set construction because you always work on a very small subset called core set, right? So, and this could actually also imply fully dynamic algorithm. For instance, some data point here is modified, then it only uh, like affects your sketch alongside this log n depth path. So, and the streaming algorithm also follow. So therefore, we only need to focus on this offline setting. Uh, our main result is a core set that can be constructed in, li in linear time with the size, uh, this jk to the mean jk, and the other dependence is polynomial in one over epsilon d log n. So this j is the max number of missing coordinates. This we have to assume. Um, and previously, only core set for missing values uh, for g equals one was known. Um, and uh, even though this JK to the mean JK seems large, uh, actually this is not quite uh, avoidable. Um, and here we, we actually noticed that uh, there might still be a gap about this D and log N because for Euclidean case means that there is no missing value. The best bound is actually independent of both D and log N. And th this is given by our recent paper. Um, so that's our result and then um, as an application, so. We could apply this core set, uh, like you first uh, uh, construct this core set in, in, in linear time, and then you just apply another, maybe just this PTAS in, in this to, uh, SODA paper. You, you can immediately improve this from square quadratic time to near linear time, and this is the first uh, near linear time PTAS for this uh, uh, k-means with missing values. Um, so yeah, so next, let's talk about the construction of this. Um, so, 
We use this important sampling algorithm, which is a standard method for constructing process. And it consists of three um, steps. First, you will need to compute an important score for every point in the data set. And then you simply draw some independent some number of independent samples from this uh, data set and proportional to this uh, important score. Eventually, you just reweight these uh, sampled points. So I won't go into detail, uh, and there, there indeed needs to, a, a lot of arguments need to be done uh, for this to, to work, but uh, in this talk, the focus is really to resolve this lack of triangle inequality. So previously, if triangle inequality holds, then this important score could be computed very easily. Uh, and this time, the since we don't have triangle inequality, we really need some new uh, method for this. Um, OK, so, so by the way, let me give you an intuition. How does this uh, important score is computed? So basically, we want to measure uh, the importance of a point as the maximum contribution uh, of that point to the uh, objective over all possible centers. Um, so this is not easy to compute, and uh, so um, and we, we furthermore don't have the triangle inequality. So we use another method proposed by a previous work where um, the computing this, this important score is reduced to finding so-called K-center cross out. So essentially, um, so th this is the main, like, a bridging lemma that bridges this k-center corset to our final corset. So basically, if you can find alpha corset for k-center of size t, then you all have a, a k-means corset like this. Um, and in the remainder of the talk, I will briefly talk about how we construct this corset. Um, so yeah, so what's the definition of corset for k-center? Okay, k-center is basically, um, so, you, so for k-means, you, you uh, aggregate the distance. Uh, the sum of the distance. So K center aggregate the distance as the max. Okay, so the alpha core set for K center is a subset that preserve the max distance to the center. So at, up to alpha factor. Um, so how do we find this? So remember that we still need to find a K center core set with the missing values. Uh, so by the way, why K center core set could help? Because this K center sort of measures the maximum distance. So it is in some sense measures the importance of the points. Uh, so our approach is to reduce this K center with missing values to those with, without missing values. So the construction for K center without missing values was known, and we, which we could use. So the idea here is to reduce the data set in a carefully chosen subset of coordinates. And then for every subset, we basically um, like restrict the data set. How do we do that? So let's say we have this uh, uh, subset of coordinates, and then we only take the uh, vectors or data, set, data points that does not have any missing value on these coordinates, and only keep those. And then ignore the, um, the coordinates that is not in this eye. This way we will clearly build a data set that does not have missing values. And then eventually we simply take the epsilon cross set for these um, cross set, for these, uh, uh, ordinary data set, which we just construct and take the union. So why does this work? And uh, okay, so why does this work? So the observation here is that since we care about the maximum distance, right? So let's just uh, pick some arbitrary key point center set, C. And let's say we fix some data point. And let's also assume that this uh, distance to this uh, center is R. Um, so the observation is that very simple. So for every this uh, uh, key points, uh, a C in the key point center, we let I of C to be the coordinate that contributes the most to this distance uh, to C. So since the distance to every little, little C is at least R, so we would conclude that this particular uh, coordinate that contributes the most will contribute uh, still very much, like R over root D. Um, and the idea here is that what if, if we can find an I that does not hit the missing value of x and includes all these uh, i of c that contribute the most to the distance, then we are happy because then this uh, case center core set on this restricted data set would still have this root d gap. Um, so formally we will, like the family that satisfies this intuition is uh, formally defined as this JKD family. I don't have a better name for it. So 
basically, we, we see that we want this k, which is the uh, i of csat. j is the missing value. We want this, uh, um, so for every such j and k, we want there exists some uh, like subset of coordinates that does not hit any missing value and have this uh, case as a subset of this uh, coordinate. Um, and the technical thing is really to show um, the existence of this small JKD family. Uh, and this I won't give more details, but the thing is that we use some randomized method. And this family could be simply uh, found by independently sampling coordinates, by, by this number of sampling of coordinates. And OK, so, so this JKD family uh, actually was used as a technical ingredient in, in other contexts, such as data structure and fault tolerant algorithms. So we think this use of um, this combinatorial structure could be useful for, for future research for missing values. Uh, OK, finally, to really get the linear time algorithm, we still need uh, another step. So this is a very simple algorithmic framework for the VX12 reduction that turns the construction of corset to k-center corset. Um, so basically, every, so you have this data set X, and every time you compute the alpha corset of it, and then you can compute the important score for points that is in this corset. And then the algorithm would simply delete this corset and continue. So this whole loop would take many, many, like the, the while loop would run for many times. And eventually, if we do this computation of course naively, that would be quadratic time again. So here we would use some trick. We basically observe that this uh, is a decre de decremental algorithm for constructing the course. So we, we, we only need to make this uh, dynamic. So we use, uh, um, so, so the key step is to uh, make this Gonzalez iterative phrases point algorithm dynamic. So by the way, this Gonzalez algorithm is used to find a key center corset. And uh, we, we make this uh, dynamic. So the idea here is that, so we, we, we basically random, do the random projection to project this d-dimensional data set to, a line, to several lines and then do the uh, 1D dynamic data structure. Uh, okay, so that's all for my talk. Thanks.